Honda? What took you so long? For those of you living under a rock, the Japanese automakers have not been doing a great job at producing electric vehicles as of late. I mean, Nissan had the Nissan Leaf and it was fine, especially for the early days, but Chatmo's a dying standard and I don't understand why the Leaf is still being produced. And the reason why I don't understand why it's being produced is because it's still using Chatmo, the dying standard. So I'm confused about that. But also Nissan has released the Aria and unfortunately it's a fairly okay vehicle. I actually think it is the best Japanese vehicle on the market today, but the problem is the price. It's too expensive for what it's offering. That and the entire Japanese competition, it doesn't matter what Japanese vehicle you buy. Toyota BZ4X, Subaru Solterra, those two vehicles are basically the same anyways. Mazda MX-30, oh what an embarrassing electric vehicle. Like Mazda should be ashamed of themselves for even thinking about actually producing an electric car like the MX-30. It is so terrible. They all have this one thing in common. Every Japanese vehicle, except the Nissan Leaf, but that's because it has pathetically slow charging anyways. The Japanese competition will peak at just a little above 100 kilowatts, but not quite 150, and they'll do it for only a short period of time. And also, they limit you to two DC fast charges. After those two, they will limit you to a charging speed even slower than than what we already think are slow charging speeds. So yeah, clearly the Japanese do not have the ability to build an electric vehicle for the United States. They've been doing such a terrible job, every single one of them. And to my surprise, we have been waiting for Honda actually to come out with their own electric vehicle because they've reported they're going to go full electric at some point too. And also, if you recall one of my previous videos, they're also partnering up with five other other automakers towards building a brand new charging network of 30,000 charging stations. But I never understood it, the whole thing because Honda hasn't produced a single electric vehicle. I've heard that there is such a thing as the Honda E and it might be around in Europe, but don't quote me on that. I actually don't know if European buyers can actually buy the Honda E. I have heard that this thing exists, but I don't know if it's a production car people can buy. I 100% know it is a car you cannot buy here in the United States. Which is why I say Honda today currently doesn't produce any electric vehicles for North America. And I found it shocking that they were getting on board with this big six network as I'm calling it. But a little bit ago, Honda, or actually more specifically Acura, Acura is their performance division. Acura has revealed to the public the Acura ZDX. It's another electric SUV. Like, we don't have enough of them. Oh, I want to see more electric sedans or minivans even. I hate crossovers and SUVs. I've gone on the side tangent way too many times. You guys know. But yeah, of course, they released another electric SUV. Wow, I'm so excited. But this electric SUV that they've launched is actually a little odd compared to the rest of the Japanese vehicles. And the biggest reason why it's odd is because for the most part, Acura didn't actually develop the powertrain. The whole vehicle is riding on GM's Altium platform. So when you actually take a look at some of the specs of it, you're gonna find that it matches up extremely similarly to a Cadillac Lyric, which is Acura ZDX's biggest competitor. Kind of funny that Acura's biggest competitor is GM and yet GM's building the actual car because it is an Altium based vehicle vehicle, which is designed by GM. So technically this is not a Japanese vehicle. So I can still say any Japanese vehicle you buy is still going to suck. But Acura has decided we're going to see how somebody else does it. And then we'll see if we can figure out how to do it better. But yeah, you're going to find a lot of the under the hood stuff being GM components. The battery, the motors, the entire powertrain setup is all GM. The only exterior modifications that Acura has made is the body design, obviously. And then also they tuned the suspension suspension to be much more sportier and dynamic. Those are accurate changes as well, not GM's changes. Though GM is still actually ultimately gonna be the one to build this electric car. More on that in a few minutes. But yeah, the powertrain is essentially the same. And actually, if you look on the interior, a lot of the layout is actually very similar to GM's interior layouts. And you'll find that a lot of the switch gear, the turn signals, the window switches, the buttons, climate controls, a lot of those are actually parts 
lifted out of GM vehicles, which is weird to see, especially in a Japanese vehicle. So yeah, you're gonna find a lot of GM components, but modified to fit more of Acura's design language. Despite that, there was a lot of design elements that you'll find in GM vehicles. Like I hear even the startup chime, you know, the chime that you hear when the car turns on, but your seatbelt's not locked. So it plays that chime to remind you, put your seatbelt on before you drive. That chime is literally the exact same chime as what GM uses, not what Acura uses. There's a lot of part sharing going on with a GM product. And to what I would think a lot of Acura buyers is probably bad because a lot of people like to buy Japanese vehicles because they have a very solid reputation when it comes to reliability. Toyota having the strongest reputation, except for the BZ4X, apparently it has a reliability problem where the wheels fall off. That's not good. But Honda and Acura is also up there in terms of the reliability game. And so because they're using a lot of GM parts, I'm not entirely sure if that's going to help Acura's reputation because uh, GM doesn't have the worst track record when it comes to reliability, but they don't have the greatest either. So as a result, it may sway some buyers not to buy the Acura ZDX, which it's unfortunate if I'm being honest, but for the most part, I am glad that they chose to go with GM instead of developing their own systems for this one round, just this one time. And here's why. Again, if you take a look at the rest of the Japanese competition, they don't got this. They do not have the ability to build a proper electric vehicle. They might have nice interiors, maybe with a few quirks just because, well, it's a new futuristic thing. We gotta be quirky and such. But in terms of the actual fundamentals of the electric car itself, the ranges of them are not great. The charging is also not great. And those are like two of the most fundamental parts of the electric vehicle. And also their efficiency isn't that great. They're using bigger batteries and they're not getting that great range out of them. Because of that, Japanese competition, they don't got this. And I don't know if it's because they use specific parts that are designed in Japan first, which would make sense to me if I'm being honest. And maybe Honda does the same thing because Honda is realizing their fellow Japanese competitors are doing such a terrible job. Maybe they might want to look elsewhere and see if anyone's doing it better. And so because of that, GM's architecture, while there is a fundamental problem with it, I do actually think GM's Ultium architecture is better compared to what the Japanese have to offer. Now, this one bit about the whole Ultium architecture based ZDX, here's the one thing about it that is making me really nervous. GM has shown that they are absolutely struggling to get their Ultium vehicles out of the factory. And it's not because of bad sales, there's demand for it. Problem is, they cannot mass produce these things at scale. And they are doing such a terrible job keeping up with the demand. They've already been struggling with the bolt, but that's because due to that vehicle being such an amazing value, I can understand why they're struggling to get those things out of the factory. It's because everybody wants one evidently. But the Ultium platform is to me just, I don't understand what's going wrong with it because the demand is there, but it's not anywhere near as high as the demand of the bolt. But somehow there's so much holding this Ultium architecture texture back to the point where production rate is slow, even slower than Ford's production rate. Like how many Cadillac lyrics are there? Not many. How many Hummer EVs does GM produce in a month? So few to the point where you can literally count them on one hand because GM is struggling to get their own Ultium designed vehicles out. And now they're going to be taking on another company's design and trying to get that produced out and shipped out to them. How much more stress is this going to put on the Ultium factories because they're already in the process of trying to ramp up five different Ultium based vehicles and now they're going to take on a six that isn't even their own design and is for a competitor to them. I'm pretty sure that the factory is going to be breaking a huge sweat trying to get these things out because they've been struggling so much. That is the one downside of Acura actually using the Ultium architecture. I'm not entirely sure about the rest of the details. I mean, in theory, the charging aspects of it is actually really great and I don't know if the non truck based vehicles that GM is producing like the Lyric or the Blaze or the Equinox I don't know if they're going to use the same battery voltage switching trick that the Hummer and the Silverado use when they're going to be charging I don't know if those smaller more affordable vehicles are going to use the same voltage trick to get higher charging speeds but one thing that I do know is that compared to the Japanese competition the range is going to be better like the EPA has already tested the Acura ZDX and it's rated for like 
like 325 miles of range. That's not bad. And in terms of charging, it's got the same charging technology as the Cadillac Lyric, which I think they're still working a few kinks on that out because Tom Malogny from Say a Charge, when he did charge tests with that, he got many varying results. But when Kyle Connor got his hands on a Lyric for a day, his charging session was actually perfect in my opinion. And it charged really well. So I don't know if the exact charging speeds of which the ZDX will charge at, but one thing I know for certain, it is going to be the best charging vehicle that you're going to get compared to the rest of the Japanese competition. ZDX actually, in my opinion, is very compelling. I believe the price was released, but I'm not entirely sure what it is off the top of my head. I have actually not even heard of what the price actually is, but I heard pricing details have been released. So I'll leave that for you to figure out. While I may not know the exact number, I hear that many reviewers and analysts are saying that this is actually going to be a better value than Cadillac's own Lyric. Again, the Ultium production constraints got me a little concerned, if I'm being honest. But Honda is finally bringing an electric vehicle to the North American market. It's been way too long since they've actually done this. And there's one other detail that I have to announce as well. You know what that means when I'm holding up this cable. It's because we got to talk about charging again. And this is related to Honda, actually. Yes, Honda and Acura are going to be using the North American charging standard. Not on the ZDX initially, and that's because it's getting released in 2024 and no electric vehicle that's not a Tesla will have the NAX connector just yet, but they will have access to the supercharging network and adapters first. So when you take a look at the current ZDX, sadly, you're going to find a CCS port on it. But unlike some of the competition, Acura wants to be one of the first to make the switch in. Like I believe they may have one model year where the ZDX will have CCS. And then literally the next model year, they're going to switch it instantly for an NACS connector. And actually, I, I think I know finally understood why they actually took so long to get to the North American market. And it's because charging here has been an absolute mess. And because they knew charging in North America is an absolute mess, they've decided it's not worth producing an electric vehicle just yet. And they wanted to actually invest in the proper infrastructure first before the vehicle comes out. So that way they don't get the complaints like Ford, GM, Rivian, basically any other non-Tesla electric vehicle vehicle maker has been receiving because, well, uh, any non-Tesla charging station basically sucks. So because Acura knew this, they decided we're not going to produce any vehicles for the US just yet. We're going to wait until an actual infrastructure is properly built. And that might explain why they joined the big six network that's coming out next year. It's because they want to make sure that the network is there first before they deliver products to us. And in my opinion, that's a good move. And when they also announce that they're using this standard as well, when it officially is available for proper integration into the vehicle instead of buying an adapter, I guess that's another good reason for waiting. And I'm glad that Honda is deciding this. Now, Honda isn't the first Japanese automaker to announce this. Nissan is the first. But I am glad, unlike any other automotive company out there that's making electric vehicles, I'm glad that Honda is actually putting a really big emphasis on charging compared to the rest of the competition. The rest of the competition wanted a slice of the pie, but the problem is they came in too early to bad infrastructure, and that's why their sales are so poor. And that's why Honda hasn't made any investments until now. Now that they know superchargers are open for anyone to use as long as they use the standard, as well as they themselves are contributing towards a new network now. Again, we don't know if this network's gonna be reliable or not. Time will only tell, but it shows that Honda is paying attention to this. And I am glad that Honda is doing it. Despite that, my initial thoughts before I never actually made a dedicated video of this, but I did report this on the podcast. I'm a part of the iTunes fanboy podcast, which is mostly an Apple related podcast, not really electric cars, but every now and then we discuss some of what's going on in the electric car industry. Because if you actually pay attention to any Apple news, like I do on my random Alpha gadgets channel, um, you might know that the news is very dry. So sometimes we'll get into the electric vehicle space. And I initially thought that all the Japanese vehicles, they're going to fail here in the U.S. because Toyota, Subaru, 
Nissan, Mazda, their current offerings are hot garbage. They suck. Honda is actually showing they want to do this properly. And the reason why they haven't produced one yet is because then was not the time to do it. Charging technology was just not up to snuff. Now we're really starting to ramp things up here in the US with ChemPower, Alpitronic, and uh, various other hardware providers that I keep mentioning coming to the US. NACS becoming the official North American charging standard with CCS being phased out. I now understand why Honda has waited and this was a good move. I'm genuinely excited for Honda's future. And personally, I cannot wait for them to electrify the Odyssey. I'm a minivan fan, guys. I love minivans. And the Honda Odyssey, honestly, is my favorite. So because of that, yeah, I'm a little bit of a Honda fan, if I'm being honest. Despite that, I mostly prefer American-made vehicles or American-designed vehicles. I'm excited, Honda. Let's see what you got. All right, thank you for watching. Do me a favor and interact with the stuff below. My name is Alpha DeWolf, Random Alpha, signing out.